make sure that this is is this work is this on good morning everybody welcome to the first toontown corporate clash let's play N not the, not the first ever just the first on this channel I, that was misleading i apologize but i've woken up it's a nice cold windy sunny day here and i figured now's the time today's the day i didn't even eat breakfast yet i decided to hop on and do this because i've been meaning to do this and now i'm doing it here we are listen it's not that toonie was getting old i love toonie the tiger but it's time for a change of pace we're gonna mix it up we're gonna start doing two let's plays at the same time and hopefully if anything that means i'll do them more frequently probably not but i'm gonna try but here we are today on corporate clash this is my main account as you can see this is the funny misunderstood skinny mega snoop previously evil mega snoop that we got a name change for a charity event here is the og mega snoop right here we have that one as well. Here's the one laugher I spent a month and a half playing. We've got Fat Turkey Mega Snoop, and for some reason, somebody named Gale. I, I don't remember. All I know is Gale's going bye bye. Goodbye, Gale. Wait, 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 wait. And Gale's being replaced with our new Let's Play tune. So, what's it gonna be, guys? I figured I'd let fate decide. Where's the shuffle button? Deja vu. Bam! There, that's- oh god, that's so ugly, no. Bam! It's still a beaver. Honestly, I didn't think this through, because I had a name in mind for the Let's Play tune, and I'm trying to figure out what animal to make them, and unironically, I think the best one would be duck, and you'll see why. But you gotta understand, there was a point in time where me and the boys were, like, downstairs at, like, four in the morning, trying to come up with, like, names for my potential Let's Play tune. Why is this one just red? Maybe a second color of red on there but i can't tell we're gonna go with the typical style here i like the look i like the look and now it's time to type a name and you guys don't get to see what it is yet here we go so while they review the name i will be known as colorful duck that is going to be it ttcc let's play episode one colorful duck and his gags will be not important i think lure throw is actually a good way to go just because it's something i can do on my own right i don't have to worry so much about other people helping me out especially if i can level up the gags enough and be able to just do things solo it would be great but here's colorful duck and he's got to go visit fran's neck vein but we're not going to do that we're going to hop on the trolley so i can get some beans first and then i'm going to go visit fran's neck vein and i'm going to try to do my first few tasks and we're going to play this for like i don't know half hour 45 minutes and then i'm going to hit stop recording i'm going to cut it up i'm going to put it on youtube and hopefully everybody likes them genuinely the reason why i thought toonie the tiger did so well was because of the name so i'm hoping that this tune can be accepted for everything that he is and everything that he will be hopefully you guys love colorful duck because it was a ruse the whole time guys his name is going to be colorful duck forever that's not true but here's hoping if the name doesn't pop up in the corner and be revealed at the end of the episode then i want you guys to try to guess just by the way that the duck looks what his name is and at least that way for some reason if it's denied then i can just make a new one and nobody has to know my embarrassment also what happened to the game this is like my first time ever having this bug in this game what's going on why can't i do anything game hello i'm restarting the game oh his name got accepted right away nobody gets to guess never mind i named him jimmy toontron yeah there you go does he kind of look like jimmy neutron just a little bit maybe try to get the clothes as close as i could but the best i can do the reason i chose the duck is because of the hair at the top was that cool they accepted that quick yeah that was real fast holy so here we are with jimmy toontron today hopefully you guys like it and if not i'll just cry it's okay don't worry about it it didn't even give me any of my throw gags before i crashed i gotta buy them all again but if you're wondering what's gonna be happening with this let's play it's gonna be a lot like the TTR let's play I play a tune I do the tasks I talk about my personal experiences the news my life etc etc I think the only question that has a valid answer to it is how far are you gonna take this tune are you gonna do kudos tasks I think doing kudos tasks would be neat just because of the fact that for a corporate clash let's play starting the game for the very first time you have the freedom to start start working on kudos tasks for a previous playground while you're starting the next playground. There's also the ability for me to work on some side tasks as well, which I think could be really good because it's a let's play and I can just take my time and sit here and talk to you guys. I can get the teleport access side tasks. Once I get to Barnacle, I can go back and start doing kudos.
kudos for the previous playground. I can have this tune doing a lot of things at once because I'm not trying to like speed run it, I'm not trying to rush it, and so I think kudos is a very viable thing that this tune could do. Also, I should have done this on Friday so we could get double experience. Now I know for next time. Oh, level up, let's go big. We're already thriving, guys, let's go. But just like with the Toonie the Tiger Let's Plays, I do already have a list of topics I'd like to talk about. And the funny thing about those topics is I keep it on a notepad that I titled Toonie, which doesn't make sense anymore. And I don't want to have one that's called like Jimmy and one named Toonie. I think I'll just have a new notepad that just says Let's Play. And then whatever Let's Play I decide to do next as I'm hopping back between the two games, I'll be able to like at least know what to talk about. And I already have so much to talk about. So this is already going to be like a jam packed filled Let's Play episode as it is. And we haven't even started yet. All I've talked about is why I named him Jimmy. <laughs> I like the name Jimmy. Kind of reminds me of the random tune show Jimmy and what was the other one? I want to say Carl, but that's not right. Jimmy and Chad, I think, right? That's what it was, Jimmy and Chad? Because that's when I made a parody of them called Timmy and Brad, and then, like, Timmy was the one that I actually loved, and so I just kept being Timmy over and over again. And it's me, I'm Timmy Toontown! How do you press the play button? So shout out my boy Jimmy, wherever you at, Jimmy. But for topics, right, as I sit here and I just run around and do the basic tasks here, I did want to talk about something that I left out of the last Let's Play episode because of the fact that I think I just forgot. It was written down, I just forgot it. But I talked about going to Level Up Expo back in February, and now it's April, so oops. And I had a good time there, but at the very end, there was a really weird thing that happened while I was there. So a couple things, actually. While I was at the G Fuel booth with Smirky, we were just hanging out, and don't don't tell his advanced GG guys that he was at the G Fuel booth. It, he wasn't trying to drink, he didn't drink anything, I swear, I promise. He was just there hanging out because he knew a couple people who worked with them and et cetera etc yada yada just because they were friends so while him and i were just hanging out at the g fuel booth we were approached by this young lady and a guy that she was with and she starts talking to smirky and i'm sitting there talking to the g fuel guy still and after like five minutes or so michael taps me on the shoulder and he's like hey by the way this is such and such and so and so they apparently have been watching our content for a long time and i went huh a long time huh how long's a long time because i've been doing this for eight years god why have i been doing this for eight years but he says they've been a regular fan of the streams and the YouTube videos and such. So they were able to track us down and be like, oh my God, it's the Toontown guys. But what's even funnier is because they were at Level Up Expo, they were a Las Vegas resident, which means they've lived here for quite some time now. That means this may or may not have been the first time our paths have crossed. They actually went, oh yeah, Mega Snoop. It's crazy that I get to actually like say hi and meet you because this isn't the first time I've ever seen you in public in Las Vegas. And I was like, Huh? You spying on me? What's going on? But no, they talked about how one time when I was at Outback Steakhouse, they also happened to be at Outback Steakhouse, and they saw me and recognized me, and at that time was a little too shy and timid to come say hi, but that they saw me and knew that it was me. And I went, oh, that's crazy. When was this? And they said, 2016. And I went, huh? <laughs> this goes to show you guys, people just recognize you. They might not always say it, but sometimes people recognize you. But honestly, I was trying to think when I went to Outback Steakhouse in 2016, and I just kind of brushed it off as, yeah, that's so funny, huh? And then I actually remembered. It, it hit me a few days ago when I was at Outback Steakhouse in 2016. It was my birthday. I had just moved here in 2016, and the apartment that I lived at, if you like hop the fence, went down and around the corner, we had an Outback Steakhouse that was like walking distance from us. And we all and we agreed that that was the outback i'd go to for my birthday that year i moved in may and my birthday was in july it all lined up that might have been the only time i went to outback steakhouse that year but it had to be that time i can remember that so vividly now because i'm putting my mind to it i knew exactly where we sat i knew exactly what i ordered we had a blooming onion and then i ordered a steak and had cake for my birthday, I remember. And now I'm like, oh God, because I can remember that so vividly. Do I remember them being there? No, the answer is no, I don't. But it's really interesting to think that during that time, somebody was there who saw me and went, I know that guy. Forgot this game had EXEs, they're just impossible to kill. Never mind, I got him, it's good. But that wasn't the only thing that happened at Level Up Expo because I actually forgot to tell one more story. Oh, I've leveled up. Oh, let's go, huge. Sorry, I interrupted my story to bring you this prestige throw, big, all right. But after 
after the convention was over, we were thinking about going home, but Ubers cost a lot, so I called my friend Noah being like, hey, could you pick me up, please? And he said, sure. But I was with Carly at the time, and we were both waiting on our ride, so we were trying to, like, coordinate him on where he could pick us up. And so we went outside, and we were standing on this one curb. It was, like, across the street from the expo center. And so as I'm talking to him on the phone, I've got a G Fuel in my hand, Carly's got a G Fuel in her hand, trying to be like, okay, do you see this hotel? Well, t when you get to that hotel, turn and as we're all just you know living our lives some guy crosses the street towards us and i don't know he's speaking like gibberish or something and we're like i don't know how to help you i don't know i'm talking i can't help you i'm sorry best of luck and then he like points at like carly's g fuel as he starts like walking towards her and i was like this is weird dude stop please <laughs> but he points at her g fuel and he's like can i have some of that i need to wash something down and she said no and he goes, but I hear it's very good. And then so he tries to grab it from her. He like lunges in and like grabs it. And as she's pulling back, they both like squeeze it. G Fuel starts flying everywhere. And at that point, my boyfriend instincts pop up and I step in and I'm like, dude, leave, go away go and he starts going off about like but i need help i need 911 i need i don't know what he needed he physically approached unconsensually towards me and my girlfriend and that was not okay and i just kept repeating i do not care leave go leave anything that he said i wasn't replying to i just said leave go away go and that's what you have to do you have to be assertive if you start answering any of their rebuttals with anything than just a stern leave they'll continue talking as if it's an open invitation for you to have a conversation with them i was very stern i just kept i just kept saying leave until he left and he did eventually leave but man it was scary when just some random dude comes up and just starts i don't know reaching and grabbing at you you don't expect it it's not something that happens every day in Unless you live in New York City, I am so sorry for you guys. <laughs> but I can't believe I didn't tell that part of the story last episode. I think I just got kind of like overwhelmed or I forgot. It's probably I forgot. I think I forgot. Yeah, but quite the story. You got to be careful out there, especially conventions, especially the Las Vegas TwitchCon happening here in Las Vegas this October. Be there. I would love to go to like MomoCon, but as everything is lining up, it doesn't look like that's going to be able to happen, which is fine. It's okay. I can watch from a distance. I would have loved to be able to go, but there's always next time. Genuinely, the Toontown community doesn't seem to be going anywhere for the time being, so I think we're all right. Actually, I want to see if I can take some time right now to pick up the teleport access side quest from Professor P. You know what I didn't do on this tune that I'm not gonna do now because it required me to restart the whole episode? The tutorial. I actually haven't done the new tutorial yet. I've only seen other people do it and I also know that it takes like half an hour so maybe that's why I didn't do it. Yeah, but I love what they did with the schoolhouse. I just love the way that it looks with the training room and oh look at that. Look look at that. Who does that? What other Toontown does that? TTR? Maybe. I gotta go to Silly Street though. But what else is going on? What other news is there? I've got a few so hang on tight the episode is apparently half over already but i'll try to get through some of these i swear so the big piece of news that came from last week which was just more of a fun funny thing was this poll online on twitter where they were putting old school mmos and video games against each other to see who would win but as time went on and the bracket continued and you know toontown started winning on one side and wizard 101 started winning on the other side it started picking up steam and gaining some popularity these things happen in communities like this where a random thing will just kind of boom out of nowhere. So now suddenly, instead of getting like 600, 800, maybe a thousand votes on one of these polls, the next polls are getting like 1,500, 2,000, and then it comes down to the finals. And in the finals, we had Toontown Online on one side and Wizard 101 on the other side. And as far as Toontown Online goes, we kind of saw this more as a representation of the community as a whole. And so all of the Toontown community came together to try to vote Toontown Online. But then Wizard 101 one got wind of this and i mean the actual brand wizard 101 got a hold of this and they start tweeting about it and then corporate clash starts tweeting about it and then ttr starts tweeting about it and now we've got a full-blown race on twitter where most of these polls had maybe one to two thousand votes this one had like thirty thousand. this really
really blew up in these small communities and a lot of people got wind and were hyped about it. For a full day on Twitter, there's propaganda being thrown left and right and people who had played both games not knowing what to vote for. In the end, by a slim margin, Toontown came on top because of course it did, baby, let's go. And I don't know, man, it was just a really exciting 24 hours to actually see something like nice on Twitter as opposed to all of the garbage that is currently on there. Like for some reason, the Twitter bird was replaced with a doge. Just, just don't make a Twitter. If you haven't made a Twitter, don't make a Twitter. That site is not worth it. And I know they just started up another bracket where it has like more of the private servers going against each other. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is because of the fact that Twitter's making their changes where only verified accounts can vote on polls, which right? We hate Twitter. And the other reason is when you come off of something really big, you want to be able to hit the ground running. So, hey, this last poll did really well. Let's make another one to maybe not mirror the success, but at least capitalize off of it and see if I can get more votes on this one. So, hey, why not? Big level up. Let's go. But speaking of all these different like categories of Toontown Online and how we see ourselves as Toontown Online for the most part, but there's also still like Toontown written and Toontown Corporate Clash and probably other private servers too. This is an interesting topic I wanted to bring up and I'm going to do this in the least drama-y way as possible because I don't think it's drama. I don't even necessarily think it's negative. I just think it has a very minorly hurtful impact on the community. Very minorly. Like a paper cut. Like where it doesn't really hurt but like it does technically. And I truly think it comes from a good place and I'm just beating around the bush. Let me tell you what it is. So on Twitch they have this new category that you can stream under called Toontown Rewritten. Most everybody who ever streamed on Twitch when they streamed Toontown would just stream under Toontown Online, and the reason for that is that once upon a time, a long time ago, 2015, 2016, we did have all of these other categories. We had Toontown Rewritten, and we had Toontown Infinite, and Toontown Fellowship. I'm not quite sure what all of the different private servers that were available at that time were, but there were. There was a lot, and none of them had images because Twitch was still trying to figure out if Toontown was to be taken seriously or not, but that was a thing, and you would have all of these different Twitch streamers who stream Toontown in the Toontown community be spread across all of of these different categories because they just wanted to be like politically correct and stream under the correct game because yeah guess what they're not streaming Toontown online they are in fact streaming Toontown rewritten or Toontown infinite or whatever Toontown it happens to be however this also split viewership and it made getting found in the Toontown category near impossible because if you wanted to find like a new streamer who streamed Toontown you would have to like find the specific Toontown game you were looking for and for a lot of people outside the Toontown community they they don't know that these private servers exist. So a long time ago, a few of the community heads, I think I was part of that discussion somewhere, decided, hey, let's just have everyone stream under Toontown Online as a more unified sign of the community. We asked Twitch to get rid of all of those extra categories because we didn't need them. So they did. And then they put a image on Toontown Online. So when you actually find it on Twitch, it has a little poster so you can see the game and all was fine for seven years. Now, I truly think that that this came from a good place. I don't think it was anyone on either team that was all like, hey, we need our own category to put ourselves away from Toontown Online. No, I don't think it was that at all. I think it was genuinely somebody from the community who thought that this was a good thing and being all like, well, we want Toontown rewritten to have more recognition. Let's give them their own category. It sounds like a good thing, but as somebody who's been here for a while and seen these things unfold, here's why it hurts. So number one, giving Toontown rewritten its own category then breeds the question, should Corporate Clash have its own category? Should Tooniversal have its own category? Should ODS have its own category? Once you have one, it makes sense to then start making others. And if in the least bit have Corporate Clash have its own category, I feel like that's probably going to be the next step. But then that does start a division of the community. When people are looking for a new person to watch, there's a couple places that they do that. Number one, they just search the word Toontown and click the first thing that comes up. If you're going to click the first thing that comes up, whether it's Toontown Rewritten or Toontown Corporate Clash, you are only going to see half of the people streaming Toontown because the other half are going to be in the other category, or we may still even have some in the Toontown Online category. Number two, when a larger person decides to stream Toontown, people will decide to click on the category to see who else streams that game because they're curious. They want to see what kind of community it has, which is exactly what happened. Shout out Amesy real quick. I love this girl. She's thriving. She's doing great things. And recently she did a subathon where she wanted to give a little attention to Toontown while she was doing it. 
pregnant and she streamed in the Toontown rewritten category. I don't think she did anything wrong. I just know that this is a circumstance in which this comes to play. She streamed in the Toontown rewritten category. She had about 2,000 viewers. People who were interested in Toontown and other Toontown streams then click on the Toontown rewritten category and they see like four or five streamers there. But you know what they don't see? The six or seven streamers that were in the Toontown online category. And again, this isn't her fault because if she chose the Toontown online category, they would be missing out on the people in the Toontown rewritten category. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. When you're a small enough community like Toontown is, it really does help to have everybody unified together under one category. Especially when a lot of these private servers don't have the type of recognition to stand alone. Toontown rewritten and Toontown corporate clash both have a decent community behind them, especially when it comes to content. But also when it comes down to it, there isn't so much viewership funneling through Toontown that you're really going to make a career out of it. So like missing out on a couple extra viewers here or there isn't going to make that big of a difference. It just means that you are missing out on a couple viewers here or there. So in the grand scheme of things, yes, this is very, 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 very minuscule. It's not really actually like stabbing the community and the whole community is going to die. No, not at all. It is just something that I've noticed because history does tend to repeat itself. It is something I've seen before and I know what kind of effect it has on the community. It's just a small divide on a small portion of the community that is already even smaller. It affects very little and it's just, if anything, a good commentary topic for my Let's Play. So anyway, I digress. That's like my one maybe borderline interesting topic that I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on because maybe you're all like, hey, I'm all for having a Toontown rewritten section and a Toontown corporate clash section. Give them all the recognition they deserve, which yeah, they do deserve recognition. I just hate to think that it's another thing that divides our community. I really want to see this community grow strong and have people stream in under one umbrella. So whether you're streaming Toontown Rewritten or Corporate Clash or Fellowship or Tooniversal or ODS, that you can share that viewership with others. We're a small community and we're strongest when we're together. That's my bottom line. I am already going very far into this episode and am already running out of time and I feel ugh. And I haven't even gotten to half of my topics. I've gotten to like three because I was just ranting, you know? But let me hit you with like maybe two more and then I'll save the others. I do want to talk about this one. This one's really important to me. And this one is again about Twitch streaming and about Toontown, but in a more lighthearted note because one of my favorite channels that I like to watch a few times a year called GDQ, Games Done quick ended up speed running toontown corporate clash on their twitch channel now it wasn't on like the grand stage where they usually get 50,000 to 100,000 viewers but it was still a toontown representation in the speed running community which is something that i never thought i would see a long time ago me and a guy named gear up aka gag strategist aka matt love you matt we tried to get toontown rewritten to be a speed run category at gdq and it's a very hard push because it is an online game and it's kind of tough to speed run because of that and so back in 2016 we were denied a couple times and so we just kind of gave up and did speed running on our own as you know i've done a lot of speed run videos i had one go live recently if you haven't seen it go check it out but gdq and one of their side shows decided to allow toontown corporate clash as a speed run category and they did a speed run of all of toontown central they didn't follow a very specific rule base they kind of just casually did it with two people where you could teleport back and forth but they weren't utilized like the most precise strats they were just kind of enjoying themselves having a good time and showcasing the game they showcased a couple speedrun strats like hey if you join a club that has a multiplier you get bonus gag xp and that's really gonna help because we're gonna get to level two and three and four gags before the end of the run and help us fight the boss better which is not something i did on this tune this tune is clubless <gasps> poor tune so lonely poor jimmy so they were doing stuff like that and showcased how they had like a perfect boss run which was cool it was really great to watch and then after that they took an hour to do a showcase of a few of the manager fights which was splendid because they decided to try to I guess in a sense speed run kind of the pace setter but if you've ever done the pace setter fight it's a speed run every single time you do it let's be honest and so there were a few clips floating around from that um how about the gamble wait do you have, yeah, do you have gamble, gamble drop gamble. uh where the fuck <laughs> 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 you what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. That was all skill, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, did he do it? We did screwed? defeat the pace setter using only skill. 
I had a good time watching it and I know a lot of the community members were in chat there like cheering them on and hopping on in game to maybe not join them and help because they didn't really require that but to at least like watch what was happening and be part of the experience which I think has always been a great part of Toontown speedruns is getting the community involved and whether they want to help by helping fight cogs and teleporting or if they just want to stand idly by and watch you're welcome to do that and I think that's what makes it a great community speedrun though you can't have the good without the bad and there was a point in time where there were some trolls who hopped on and tried to ruin the speed run and they kind of saw that coming and were just trying to be patient with it. But luckily, because this stream did have 2,000 viewers, the Corporate Clash team was able to step in pretty quickly and take care of the guys. And heck, even I jumped on to do my part because I know for some reason these guys have such a big ego that they just want to get my attention all the time for no reason. So all I did was hop on and stand in the playground. And I just stood there and I didn't say anything, do anything. I just stood there. I had a couple, two, three of them gather around me and try to shout things at me, and I, I just stood there. So I was doing my part by distracting them so that they couldn't troll. I'm just happy to do my part, guys. Where's Punchline? Where am I going? I got all the streets mixed up, but it is cool to see Toontown get this recognition across all of these different communities. Speedrunning community is the one that I never thought Toontown would really fully tap into, but it's great to see it recognized by so many people who are already outside the Toontown community. Community. Like it shocks me whenever I find out somebody else plays Toontown. Like, oh, this speedrunner that's known for this game plays Toontown? That's crazy. Oh, this other content creator that's known for this thing plays Toontown? That's crazy. What do you mean Quackity used to play Toontown? That's insane. Always brings a warm feeling to my heart whenever I really think about how big this community is. Even if it doesn't have the average player base that you see every day, I'll be honest, it still has an average player base, which is pretty big. There was a brand new game. It was an MMO and it shut down in like four four months because its player base got under a hundred. We have two Toontown servers that are several, several years old that outlasted a modern day AAA MMO. I want you to think about that. That's crazy. And Jimmy here is one away from getting that new lure and that new throw. And he's also one away from getting a cold collar. He's also one away from defeating 10 cogs. So if I can do all three of those things at the same time, I feel like that'd be a perfect place to cut the first episode of Jimmy Toontron Duck Genius and be able to end the first episode of my Toontown Corporate Clash Let's Play. What do you guys think? I'm very blessed that every single cold collar I've fought so far has been a level one. And I can't believe I spent so long talking about the things that I've already talked about because I still have like four topics left over for next time. That's crazy. You get everything. That's a new lure, Jimmy. Let's go big. Oh, this is a new throw, Jimmy. Let's go big. This is the drop. He got everything done at once. Oh, Jimmy, huge. I got to remember to say Jimmy and not Toonie when playing on this tune because by default, I will probably say Toonie at least once or twice, and I will try my best to cut it out of the video when I do. But you man, it's like when you date one girl for a while, and then you start dating another girl, and it's like, maybe they don't even have like similar names. Maybe it's close enough where you like accidentally might call one of them the other. And it's really embarrassing, guys. It's so embarrassing. If you've ever been there, I'm not saying this is something that everybody does. I haven't done it yet. I, I hope that I never do. Feeling the burn? I sure am. Yeah, I'll do that next time, all right? I gotta go talk to Postman Pete. The cleanup for the day, make sure to watch the other videos I've made. I've been really trying to my effort to make more relevant, more engaging videos. I think they're doing well. The speedrun video that I've done, people are reacting really well to. I can see it doing well over time. It's still growing in its viewership, so if you haven't checked that out, check it out. And of course, the one that I most recently uploaded before this, Toontown on my Minecraft, where I got that Tooncraft map and I put it on a local server and me and my friend Josh played it and we just kind of messed around on it just being silly and having fun with it but still showcasing it if you guys wanted to check it out and play it yourself and then the one that I'm going to be editing right after this is a highlights video of when me and Stuck the Duck and Smirky played Doors it was a Roblox game there was some great moments from that and I'm gonna have to take the time to do that. Otherwise, on Twitch lately, I've been streaming Breath of the Wild in preparation for the new game coming out, so if you wanna come check that out, you can. Overall, I think I'm just trying my best to do more positive stuff here. I wanna bring more positivity, more fun, more energy, and less complaints, right? I've noticed myself complaining too much, and I don't wanna slip back into that habit, so I'm truly thankful for everything I have, the people around me, the opportunities I've been given, the blessings I have. You guys alone are a blessing to me, and I appreciate you to the moon and back for that. This 
has been the first episode of Jimmy Toontron, Duck Genius, Corporate Clash, Let's Play Episode 1. We got to level 6. We got about halfway through the playground. Jimmy's ready to pick it up next time that I have an hour's worth of time to sit down and record. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Hopefully we'll continue this one for as long as we've done the TTR one. And we'll still come back to the TTR one as well. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Stay awesome. God bless. And peace.